A deadly late winter storm has blasted the U.S. East Coast from Virginia to Maine. There was heavy snow and rain, but the real destruction has been delivered by the wind. In coastal Massachusetts, it sent giant waves crashing into the shore and seawater flooding into the streets. Across the region, trees fell as gusts reached 140 kilometers per hour. Five people have died. Others have made close escapes. We ran out. My son was still in the car with the tree on top of it. Now, at one point this morning, the number of homes and businesses without power stood at nearly two and a half million. Some may not see lights come back on until tomorrow. Most places will experience strong winds until tonight. Now, Megan has been tracking this story for us all day. Let's talk about the people who've unfortunately lost their lives in this storm, Megan. Well, Natasha, it's, it's interesting. We just saw that clip from that woman saying that her son was able to get out of that car with the tree still on it because the five people that were killed, whose deaths were attributed to the storm, were all killed by falling trees. So it shows how deadly this is and how dangerous this is. We know that five people are dead from four different states. There was a 77-year-old woman in Maryland, an 11-year-old boy in New York, and there was another child, a six-year-old in Virginia, all killed by falling trees, as well as a 44-year-old man in a different part of Virginia and a man in his 70s in Rhode Island. So the storm has turned deadly and you can see why there's been so much destruction going on right now with waves crashing over those trees falling down wires that have been fallen down as well we know that about one in four americans will feel the effects of the storm because 80 million people are in its path on the east coast and another 22 million people are under a coastal flood warning and as we mentioned more than a million people are experiencing powder, power outages right now in, a, again, multiple states, in Massachusetts, in Virginia, in Washington, D.C. Hundreds of thousands of people in those states do not have power, and that's because of those winds, that's because of the rain, and it's also because of this heavy, wet snow that is falling and also causing problems, knocking out power lines and trees. Now, Massachusetts has been hit particularly hard by all of this, so hard that the National Guard was called in, 20 members of the National Guard, sorry, excuse me, 200 members of the National Guard and 50 people have been rescued by them. The Massachusetts governor is saying, if you are told to leave, you should leave. This is not the storm for you to ride out, ride out at home. You should leave if you are told to. So certainly a dangerous situation, Natasha. On the other hand, Megan, people who want to leave, who want to move through air travel, through train travel, that's been a complete nightmare for them. Tell us about that. Absolutely. I mean, going in and out of some of these regions has been nearly impossible. Yesterday, certainly, a lot of people couldn't leave. And today, there's still some problems. We know that about 3,300 flights were canceled, including hundreds of flights in these major centers in the United States. There were a couple of New York airports that were brought to a standstill. There were delays in ground stops. There was the same thing in Boston and Philadelphia. So planes appear to be mostly back to normal now, but I believe there are still some delays. Now, train service was also affected by this. Amtrak actually stopped all of its service yesterday along the northeast corridor. Now, it is working to get some of that service back up this morning, but there are still train cancellations but in on along that eastern corridor. So if you're trying to get in or out of this region by train, you certainly should be checking for the latest information online because it's still not easy.